As of now, Llama 3.1 405B has redefined what state-of-the-art in open-source large language models are. It showed new capabilities that we thought we wouldn't see before, and it showed for the first time definitively, now with a ton of benchmarks, that open source can actually intersect the capabilities of closed source AI, at least in this case, just GPT-4 Omni. Now, Mistral had something to say about that today, and they released what they're calling Mistral Large 2, or what they're describing as large enough. This is another massive step forward with a model that's less than half the size of Llama 3.1 405B, at 123 billion parameters. And what's crazy is, in my opinion, using this, it just about matches the performance of the largest Llama 3.1 model, and it focuses in areas that I think are maybe more important and relevant today, at least when it comes to agentic applications and people who want to run open source large language models on a single GPU. The biggest breakthrough being that this model is intended to be run in full precision on a single H100, and you can do it right now. You don't need some crazy uh, local Mac Studio cluster or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of GPUs to run this in its full form. It also works in multiple languages, does coding out of the box, and directly implements improvements from Mathistral and Codistral we saw last week, although this model is transformer-based. So there's a lot to unpack here. Welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So I was genuinely surprised to see this release today. Obviously, we know Mistral has been releasing a ton of massive updates to their models and their research in the past few weeks. Granted, Meta's release of Llama 31405B is something we've been waiting for for months and that we actually weren't sure was even going to happen. If there was ever a moment to show that open source AI drives other open source AI to get better and continue to question and push forward what is state of the art and what is really the definition of a frontier model, I don't think you need more than this to show that. So let's jump into what Mistral has to say about this new frontier model, which I believe is in a class of itself. Like obviously, Llama 31405B is still the best or most performant um, right now, but this model being basically a third of the size is completely wild. Now, I will say this model isn't fully available for commercial use. Right now, this is mostly meant for research use, and that's one important caveat relative to the other meta models. So similar to Llama 31405B, this has a uh, 128,000 token context window. It supports a few dozen languages right off the bat and nearly 80 coding languages. So what I like about Mistral is they're really specific still about what this model is meant to do and what it's not meant to do. Another really cool thing is Mistral really doubled down on their focused model approach where they say here that Mistral 2 is designed for single node inference with long context applications in mind. The size of 123 billion parameters allows it to run at large throughput on a single node, and that was a distinct design decision. This also means it's cheaper to fine tune, uh, cheaper to iterate on, and just all around more affordable to run. They also meant to set new records with performance in this model, especially when it comes to cost of serving on evaluation metrics and just getting benchmarks done faster. A lot of people don't realize that a big part of the reason we have to wait for benchmarks after releases is it actually costs quite a bit of money to re-bench all these models uh, across the different benchmarks that do exist, and then also to have it replicated enough times that we can actually trust the numbers. Code and reasoning is a core attribute of this model, and agentic applications were first and foremost uh, in terms of the priorities that Mistral had when they made this. So we saw Codistral 22B and uh, Codistral Mamba come out in the last few months from Mistral, both of which were really impressive. I think they learned different things from each, obviously, since Codistral Mamba has um, an entirely different architecture. But they say here that they trained Mistral Large 2 on a very large portion of code. Mistral Large 2 vastly outperforms the previous Mistral Large when it comes to coding, and it is basically on par with GPT-4 Omni and Cloud 3 Opus and Llama 3405B. Now, it's important to note here that Llama 3405B, I would not say is necessarily a frontier coding model. It's great when it comes to being um, a really powerful instruct model, but when it comes to just coding, I think Mistral still has sort of a leg up, and uh, Cloud 3.5 is still by far the best. And when we look at code generation performance and math performance, we're seeing large margins ahead of Llama 3170B, which frankly, I think Llama 3170B will be the most used and fine-tuned variant of the latest Llama models. And it's cool to see that Mistral Large 2 is already well above that and well outside of anything that could be described as margin of error. So another significant area of effort was enhancing the model's reasoning capabilities. And this again was a key focus to reduce a tendency to hallucinate or generate plausible sounding but factually incorrect information. 
One thing I found interesting that I've only really seen in papers that haven't actually been implemented is that Mistral Large 2 was actually fine-tuned to be more cautious and discerning in its responses, and in theory is meant to acknowledge when it actually can't find a solution that's within a given confidence interval of just the model itself or one that can be provided by a user. So a commitment to accuracy is a really interesting way of saying you're directing a model to focus on different things, especially when you're not right out of the box describing it as an instruct model. Usually this is something that we attribute strongly to instruct models. And what's cool here is you can see a live comparison of Mistral Large to Mistral Large 2 in Human Eval, Human Eval Plus, and a few other benchmarks. And what's cool is, you know, Mistral Large isn't necessarily the best here, but the amount of improvement is really quite shocking. And I've always been a big proponent of saying that rate of improvement in models to me is much more interesting than just raw benchmarks on release day. And this model is no different. So when it comes to code generation, what's interesting is where the preference in, high, in performance varies in these models. So what's interesting is we have C++, Bash, Java, TypeScript, PHP, and C Sharp. Bash, I think, is kind of the most generalized one when people are just asking how to use Linux. Um, Java kind of makes sense because this probably has one of the largest training sets outside of Python. And it's kind of interesting why they don't mention Python here. But what's interesting is Mistral Large 2 is performing the best in Java, which is a uh, object-oriented language. So there is, in some ways, more complexity there than in functional languages. And I'm actually working on a benchmark that compares um, object-oriented and functional performance between models in coding. So let me know in the comments if you want to see more about that. What I find interesting is Llama 31405B benches best with Bash and C Sharp, which is really interesting. And GPT-4 Omni um, is mostly focused on TypeScript and PHP. Now, TypeScript coming from GPT-4 Omni makes sense because we know OpenAI has hired on a lot of people who just do web dev because initially they thought that the biggest user group in for developers would be people who do um, web development. And also, given they're at Microsoft, you know, Microsoft actually makes a lot of open source, some would say the most um, professional open source contributions to the TypeScript project. So GPT-4 Omni being best there isn't surprising, and they're not comparing it to Cloud 3.5 uh, Sonnet, probably with good reason here. I would still argue that's the best coding LLM there is for the time being. Now, instruction following and alignment is another area that's important. And again, it keys into what they actually wanted to do with this model, specifically using it for agentic tasks. I'd also mention that when smaller versions of this are quantized, specifically um, Mr. Large 2, I think the agentic application and value of this will far surpass that, at least initially, when compared to people trying to use Llama 3170B or 8B quants as individual agents basically because there's just less work to do up front to make them compliant and understand when they're actually correctly giving the right answer. A big reason to have them admit when they're not sure or when they're wrong is like a, a really big problem in agents or in, with agentic workflows right now is if you have one of your agents working in a flow or in a series, not be honest if it thinks it's giving the wrong answer, it'll screw up all of the output from every agent that follows it. So if you can have them actually be accurate and understand when to rerun or when to go back a step, you can actually get much better and just more dynamic output from agentic workflows. And agentic workflows are such a new thing, there's no real standard. So it'll be really interesting to see where this goes. Another cool thing is that Mistral clearly understands how people use LLMs. There are some that think people just sit around and are willing to wait for a really accurate response. But in my opinion, the reason GPT-4 Omni was so impressive is it was one of the easiest to interact with. And it reminds me of why you know using Midjourney for the first time was so much fun. And it's because the time to return of a result from you prompting was basically within less than a few seconds. And that is just what people like. Like humans like to interact with models that are sharp like that. And here, this has also been prioritized with this model, also part of just making it smaller. So they say short model generations facilitate quicker interactions and are more cost effective for inference. So there are multiple wins here and MT Bench can also show us this. And what's curious is Clude 3 Opus is also mentioned here along with Sonnet. And what's cool is we're still getting big wins from Mistral Large and then obviously Mistral Large 2. So there are a lot of languages involved here. Uh, this is also cool. It's not something I really do much of because I mostly speak English and French and I'm trying to learn a little bit of Chinese. So I'm not really using these models for this, but it's kind of a cool incidental win we get with these massive improvements in performance. 
Now, there are a number of areas where this will be available. Obviously, right now, you can run this locally if you have the requisite hardware. But what's cool is they're looking to have this out in Azure AI Studio, on Amazon Bedrock, and actually even with IBM. So we should see some really cool integrations with uh, Hugging Face using this. So again, I'm most excited with this model because of its ability for function calling, a native kind of out of the box um, tuning for agentic functionalities, and the fact that I can fit all of it on a single H100 node, which I think is just really freaking cool. The other really cool thing is you can use this right now with Mistral Chat. All you have to do is log in uh, and then change from Codistral to Large 2. So I'm going to try a few things here. Um, first, I'm going to try some tests that I've been told this fails on. So one thing that I've been told this fails on is counting how many R's are in a sentence that has uh, a lot of R's. So I'm going to say, uh, in this sentence, I have many apples that... So now I'm, gonna, I'm going to count them. So we have one, two, four, five, six, seven. So let's see if we get seven. And there is a question here of how many times the tokenizer sees it. And what's interesting is it did miss it. So obviously I was asking in this sentence, not in total. And again, I'll count. So that's uh, one, two, three, seven. Uh, so let me try to ask it again. Yeah, so actually curiously, the tokenizer still has some issues with this. So curiously, this is one of my new favorite tests to understand where these models can tell your um, emphasis is in language or even in quoted text, which is kind of interesting. So I'm surprised by that one. And yes, you guys can make fun of me for the fact that this um, did miss on that. So I'm going to do a new chat here. Now I want to try sort of an agentic-esque task. So I'm going to say, uh, let's assume we have two agents, a code writer, and a code checker. Uh, write code for a game of Go using Python with the writer. Then switch to being the checker and show me the implementation actually works. So what's cool right out of the box is you can basically tell it to assume different roles without necessarily changing the system prompt. It's something that I've tried with the latest Llama and it's actually pretty okay at this, but not necessarily as well. Sometimes instruct models take things too literally, and that's why they're at times harder to prompt. I will say this does feel faster than even the um, full FP16 version of Llama 3.1 405B. We got this in like less than 15 seconds. Now what's cool is we have a pretty simple implementation here. What's also funny is first shot, this implementation doesn't have an O of N squared um, drawing system like uh, Llama 31405 did, and the expected output is correct, and it's able to show us what it's actually rendering, which was something that I had to sort of really uh, coax out of Llama 31, both in 70B and 405B. And what's cool is the tester was pretty distinct here. There's the initial board, there's the act of placing stones, and, and then there's the wind check. So it understood it didn't just have to write tests for each of these functions but it understood how to articulate what they were and show that they were actually working here, which I'm pretty impressed by. Now I'm going to go to my next step, or my next test, which is the uh, fruits in glasses. So let's say I have some fruit trees in my front yard. I'm going to make this actually harder. At least one of them is a peach tree and a mango tree. If I want a mango in one glass, and so it's a hypothetical, but it's a curious one because there's a lot of deliberate ambiguity and I wasn't necessarily as open or forward with my language as I could have been. So it just has to understand that there's at least one mango tree and at least one peach tree. And let's see here. So it's checking for ripeness. So it wants us to get good peaches. And then now we're preparing it. So some of these models take this literally and they're like, cool, yeah, just place it on top of the glass. It doesn't matter. In this case, it's having us cut them. And uh, so you're getting, so Mistral Large wants to give you diced fruit. 
uh, which is, is nice. It's not blended, it's not a hole necessarily, but uh, interesting. So it's equally distributing, that's the other thing. So it's assuming we picked one of each and then distributed them evenly among these, which that's kind of an interesting take. So this model, frankly, is much more responsive than even Llama 3170B. That's what I really liked about that model yesterday. 405B is great, but I wasn't seeing a large improvement between the two models in terms of most common tasks. Um, for writing and writing long form content, I think Llama 3405B for quite some time will have the upper hand here. But this has been really interesting and I'm probably gonna do a live stream later today showing me comparing these two models because it's much more entertaining than just watching me use one of each. So I'm curious, um, do you guys think Mistral is actually competitive with Meta's latest model here? Do you, which do you think represents a better, I guess, version of open source? Obviously Europe is really trying to batten down the hatches with any kind of open source AI because they're afraid of any kind of innovation. Um, but maybe you don't think that's the case. Um, so it's really cool to see these two big players now neck and neck in performance and raw capability. This is better, this is a great outcome for anyone who likes to use AI locally or thinks that open source AI is a human right. And I just think this is incredibly awesome. So as always, I hope you learned something from this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in the next one.